So having grown up in Australia, I've always spent a lot of time around water bodies at the beach and so on, especially during my childhood in WA and in Queensland. So naturally, as I got more into photography, these kind of places made a great subject for that. And one of my first assignments for university way back around 2006 for an introductory photography unit was to just choose a theme or subject and make a couple of handfuls of photos based around that theme. And of course, for me, I chose the beach and I remember going out on multiple days to different beaches in Perth, just taking photos of my surfboard in the sand, people at the jetty, swimming in the waves and so on. And I think it was at that point where I took something that I had already previously enjoyed, going to the beach and swimming and all that sort of stuff, and combined it with another thing that I was starting to enjoy being photography. Previous to that, I'd only really done photography very casually and it was more mechanistic, but then it took that element that I enjoy the beach with uh, photography and made me realize how enjoyable it really could be when you're photographing something that you're naturally drawn to. So even now, at least 15 years later, I still enjoy taking photos around water bodies, whether that's uh, out on jetties of people in the same fashion that I do street photography or in a more landscape sense. I even put together this little photo series called By the Waterside about a couple of years ago, just a casual one on my blog of a collection of these kind of images that I just taken incidentally. So if you feel like checking that out, it's on my blog here and I'll put a link in the description below. But a book that I would highly recommend, one of my favorites centering around the subject of water bodies is called At Water's Edge by an Australian photographer, Paul Blackmore, and it focuses on uh, the human relationship with water, how it's uh, an essential element that ties the world together, has that really common significance, but also, uh, a unique significance between cultures. So it kind of examines that throughout the black and white photography that he does around the world. And it's a great one to look at if you're into this sort of thing. When it's come to actually taking these kind of photos around water and such, I've always been restricted to the equipment that I have. At one point I had a little digital waterproof camera by Panasonic. This is probably about 10 years ago and I had it for a while and it was good for taking photos underwater during things like snorkeling or going snowboarding and so on and um, more recently doing things like the GoPro or just using a regular digital camera that isn't waterproof. So that can be a bit restrictive. I've always been fascinated by the idea of having something like a Nikonos. I've always known about them, um, been curious about them, but never actually owned or tried one. A recent work that really inspired me was a series by another Australian photographer, Norel Ortio, which was called The Place In Between. This was a lot of underwater photography and it partially inspired me to take the GoPro out in uh, an underwater fashion and use it for photos, something I would never normally do because I don't have something like a Nikonos and I just took some photos underwater and converted them to black and white and uh, as good or bad as the results might have been, more importantly, I had a lot of fun doing this. Again, combining something like being out at the beach, cooling off on a hot day, swimming and uh, taking photos at the same time. And even more recently, uh, from the footage you're seeing of me being out on the paddleboard taking photos, that was another thing that was sparked by this idea of trying to combine that pastime with uh, another one being photography and take photos out in the water and also to gain a new perspective, get different angles than I normally would. Because I had the desire to shoot film, I had to just use what I had. And for that situation, I just took my little Samsung point and shoot, uh, chucked it in this uh, waterproof bag or dry bag that I just bought on Amazon and just kept a little towel with me to dry off my hands and use the point and shoot, which was kept in a Ziploc because it's not weatherproof at all. So I would just take it out when I was ready to uh, make a photo and then just stash it away again when I was paddling off to a new location. So again, this was a lot of fun and it allowed me to get angles and perspectives that I normally wouldn't. And it's something that sparked the idea of making this video maybe as a reminder to you to think about what kind of activities or pastimes do you really enjoy that you wouldn't normally think to integrate photography into, to take a camera with you. 
Maybe it's something like just your, your work, whatever you do for work, or maybe you have a certain uh, hobby, or maybe you're into crafting or collectibles, you can use that as a photographic subject, or better yet, if it's some kind of actual activity you like to go out and do, whether that's sport or something else. So for me, living here, the beach is a big part of our lives, especially if you live in a major city, but for you, it could be something else like the snow or a desert, who knows. But what are your thoughts on photos taken in and around water? I've continued to find myself gravitating towards these kind of areas, whether it's in this country or overseas when I travel. So I think it's important to respond to that natural pull and use it to guide your photography, whether for you it's uh, the beach or something else. And when it comes to the water photography aspect, what are your thoughts? Let me know. Do you own a Nikonos? Should I try and get my hands on one and try one to, to get a little bit even more creative than some of these examples that I'm showing you now? So for me, coming out to the beach and other water bodies and places like this is a great retreat, a way to reconnect with nature. And even better yet, when I can combine photography with it and just examine the natural dynamic of these kind of places, but also the human interaction with them, it offers a lot of photographic subjects. So what is that for you? Let me know and uh, your thoughts on shooting around the water too. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was something a little bit different. Let me know if you did, if you think I should make more in the future. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.